the Bible says you have not because you ask not. Well, does that mean that if I keep asking God, then I'll get what I'm asking for? No. Hey, smart Christian. One thing that... Hey, smart Christians, I'm pretty sure you've heard this phrase before. It's in the Bible. You have not because you ask not. And I bet you've heard it oftentimes when someone is looking to get something from God. Maybe they're in need. Maybe they're in want. It's something that they want. That they're looking for and they ask God for it. And you hear someone reply, you have not because you ask not. Well, what does that really mean? Well, to get the context of it, let's go to James chapter four and see what James is saying. In chapter four, verse one, he says, what is the source of, and notice what he's talking about, what is the source of quarrels and conflicts among you? Is not the source of your pleasures uh, that you wage war in your members? Notice what he's saying. He says, is it not the source, your pleasure, is not the source, your pleasure that wage war in your members? In other words, you want some stuff. That's the issue. The issue is you not having what you want. Notice what he says in verse two. You lust and do not have. You commit murder. You are envious and you cannot obtain. So what do you do? You fight and you quarrel. You fight and you quarrel. Why? Because you lust after things. You commit murder or you fight. It could be actual murder or murder in your heart. Uh, you are envious and cannot obtain. So therefore, the reason why you fight you do not have because you do not ask. There it is. You have not because you ask not. Asking or saying you have not because you ask not, that goes in line with this. Is that to mean or to take that maybe the person who's wanting these things have never asked God? Well, it'd be kind of hard to make that stretch to think that these, because he's writing to believers who are asking for something, who want something, but they've never taken the time to go to God. Well, it's not that they haven't gone to God. It's the motive, the manner in which they've gone to God. He says in verse three, you you ask and do not receive because you ask with wrong motives. So he says, you do ask, but it's how you ask. And how you ask is virtually the same as not asking so that you may spend it on your pleasures. That's the whole issue. You are covering things. You want things. You've got your hand out for things rather than have your hand out for God. He says, you adulteresses, do you not know that friendship with the world is hostility towards God? Therefore, who, whoever wishes to be a friend of the world makes himself an enemy of God. The point is, what you ask for, the things that, that he's addressing here, is you want things because you're more concerned with how they'll help you in the world. You don't care about God. You care about what God can give you. Whereas God wants to give you him, you don't want him. You just want whatever he can give you. And therein lies the problem. You may find yourself out not to actually be believers. You may just be a shopper at a store. You may just be frequenting what you think is an ATM machine. You may just be going to someone to give them what you want. And that makes that person a user a spiritual user, so to speak, wanting to use God, not for salvation, not for uh, the spiritual benefits, but for the tangible benefits, the cars, the clothes, the houses, the money, all those different things. Now, does that mean that God doesn't want to give you things, things that you need, or sometimes he may even bless you with things that you want? Does that mean that we should never ask for those things, that there's something that I really need, I'm in need of something? Or maybe even if I want something, should I ask God for it? Well, I think whatever it is you need or want, you should always go before the Lord. But it's the heart that you have, the motive behind it. What does Jesus say? He says in 633, he says, seek first his kingdom and his righteousness and all these things will be added to you. The things that will be added to you will be the things that you need. He says, don't worry about those things. Now, it's OK to keep going to God and ask him. But again, the motive behind it, the heart behind it. That's what's important, how you ask and what you're asking for the point. Not as James says, not that you would spend it on the pleasures of, of your heart, the things that you want to. Lord, give me this so I can buy this car. Give me this so I can get this house. Give me this so I can get these clothes. I want to look a certain way. I want to act a certain way. I want to behave. I want to have certain things. I want people to now start noticing me. But the things that we should look for are the things that God would give him and that typically the world won't see it. But God will. You're asking for things to be friendly with the world. But in being friendly with, wor with the world, you cannot be a friend of God. As a matter of fact, James says that's being hostile towards God. And so 
what you don't get, you don't get because you either don't need it or because of the selfishness of your heart in asking for it. And so that might be an indication if you've been asking and asking and asking and asking and you don't get it. It might be an indication of your heart or it may simply be that God doesn't want you to have it, but still might be an indication of your heart because you're asking for things that you don't simply need, but you covet these things so much. So you're getting in fights, you're getting in arguments. If it's, if it's becoming a strain, a mental drain on you, it might be that you have not had a relationship with Christ. Seek him first, do that first. And then whatever he gives after that, that will be because he thinks that you need it. He wants you to have it. Amen.